So I think we can resume. So as I promised, okay, we will uh, try to deploy something. Okay, there are, there are a set of slides. Actually, I'm not going to read all of the stuff, only the important things. I keep them on the side. Uh, so on the other side, we can work on the website and do the same operations, okay? So uh, what is deployment actually? Well, well let's uh, make full screen at least for, for the first ones. Well, you know that actual applications don't r run on local host, right? <laughs> you connect to bank.com, uh, polito.it, whatever, google.com and so on. So we need to set up a web server and the, this web server, actually two web servers, because we have an approach where we have two web servers, one for the static pages, uh, that is the React application, and the other for the APIs, okay? And then we can have a third as uh, last uh, week, but uh, I mean, let's keep uh, things simple for the moment, at least, uh, you know, to only two API servers. Uh, we can start from scratch, that's always an option, but you know that starting from scratch, uh, it's like uh, you enter a, uh, and house, uh, your flat, and you, there's no furniture, nothing, of course, you can make them a place where you can live, but it takes a lot of effort, okay? <laughs> if you enter and everything is ready, like in a hotel, and you just need to put your, your stuff, your clothes and so on, it's easier. So we will use a, a service that is almost ready for our kind of applications, okay? And where we need to do only small configuration to adapt to the fact that we are not running on local host uh, and uh, we need to say where, is, where the code can be taken and all these things, okay? And this approach is uh, called the platform as a service, okay? Just a bit of terminology. There are many paid services, okay? So you, if you pay, you can find a lot of things. And I struggled a little bit, but I found uh, a one, one where we can deploy something for free, just for testing, okay? It's good ju just for testing, because basically deploying a, a server where you run code, it, may, it means that there's a server somewhere in the internet that needs to run your code. So you are taking part of a CPU and uh, devoting that part uh, to your code. And doing it for free, no, <laughs> it it make you, makes you makes bankrupt uh, quite quite quickly, right? <laughs> um, if anybody can register and use your services for free, okay? So typically, there's a, in these services there's a small fraction of resources that you can use for free, and uh, after a while they are simply deleted, not to keep them busy, okay? It means uh, in this service which I selected means a few minutes, okay? But it's still good for testing, okay? For, for our purposes. And then if you pay, of course, you can find whatever you like. We uh, used to have another one, but then it, it, it didn't provide a free service anymore, and so I, I changed. That's the, that's the important part we need to uh, understand. So we will use this approach, that is the approach that we followed in the whole course from the beginning, I mean, from when we started uh, talking about React. Two servers configured with the course, and we will do exactly the same. Um, the server runs as is, okay? Why, so we have the code, we just take the code, we make a, you know, just a couple of modifications uh, to make the course work correctly. We need to put a name, not localhost, the actual name of the, the, the place in the internet where the host name where the server is reachable. While for the client, we need to do an operation. We don't, I mean, we could run in development mode, but of course, it's not development anymore. We are ready for production. We are ready to deploy, right? So we are ready to make it uh, work uh, in, in, in real conditions. We need to create a build, okay? So the build will be part, uh, there's this command invite, npm run build instead of dev, build, and it will, uh, let's say, do a lot of operation and create uh, a, a, a folder, dist, where there are static files, okay? That can be served by any web server. 
uh, of course, keep the original file because if you would like to modify something, you need the development files. Okay. Um, but uh, for development, uh, the files put into this distribution, let's say it's are enough. So we'll try to do this. npm run build on your project. Okay. Of course, it needs to be a project that runs on, on localhost. There's no point in building something that doesn't work. It will not work. Okay. But it will work in localhost. You can build it. Uh, and basically, it creates a few files: a static index.html file, and this file will loads another JavaScript file and other resources uh, like uh, the CSS and so on, fonts, etc. Okay. Uh, we will try to do this. Uh, everything is put into static files. Everything is minimized in the sense that uh, there are programs that automatically uh, take out all the white space, new lines, uh, uh, reduce the name of the variables and all these things. Just to reduce uh, the amount of storage and bandwidth that you need to serve your application. But they also make uh, the code uh, unreadable. Okay? Thing, something cannot be reduced, like dot length, for instance, cannot be reduced, but all the names of the variable can be changed, okay? If you understand the code. That's, that can be done automatically, and it's done automatically by um, uh, Vite, okay? Everything is put inside, including Bootstrap JavaScript, uh, including Bootstrap React JavaScript, including all the libraries, uh, DJS and so on, whatever we have imported in our project, Byte, recognize it, and put everything together, okay? And, uh, 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 um, you know, minifies it, so it strips all things which are useless, and it creates a single JavaScript file that can, will be loaded by the index.html file, the main file. This is actually always uh, the same except for the names of the files that change every time we, ch we redo the build, okay? Not that Doing in this way is important also for another reason. Because, uh, uh, well, you remember in the beginning we included manually uh, CSS and JavaScript from uh, um, URLs served uh, in, in the cloud from the internet, right? Like uh, from CDNs. You remember Bootstrap. When we first imported Bootstrap, we said, well, you go to cdn.bootstrap. whatever, I don't remember, and you load the information, okay? And instead, serving everything for your web server is also another advantage that, uh, you know, you don't leak information about that fact that you run a, ser um, yeah, a server, an application, and so on, because everything goes to your web server, okay? If you do a request from a client towards a, a third web server, even if it's allowed by course and so on, as we did, you know, cross-origin, anonymous, and so on, that's fine. But I'm requesting a resource from a browser with a certain origin towards a web server of a third party. So it means the third party can simply have a look at the headers and, you know, know that I'm running a certain web server and so on. Could, could be you know, not so interesting for them, could be locked, could be uh, for even forbidden by, by law if you don't disclose it, okay? So just be careful about these things, okay? Developing is one thing, deployment in actual situation is another thing. You need also to comply with the laws. You know, all this uh, cookie banner, all this stuff, okay? If you include something external, you should disclose it, for instance. Okay, I mean, I don't want to enter in this legal stuff, but uh, we need to be aware of the fact that we are using some third party websites uh, from the technological point of view, if we are using it, okay? Uh, but if we make the build, Vite will put everything together, okay? And we will not need to load anything from uh, this uh, third party uh, website, which is an advantage and disadvantage. I mean, we don't leak information, what, but we need more bandwidth because what is what is loaded from a third-party website doesn't count towards uh, our bandwidth usage in our web server, of course. Okay, so that's advantages and disadvantages. Okay, so let's just try to do this. Okay, 
So, um, let me take, uh, uh, what do I use the terminal? No, it's fine. Let's use the terminal, so you learn a little bit of the terminal, it's not that bad, bad. okay? So I just create a, a, a new repository, which now is private, but I will make it public now, okay? Um, and then I will link it uh, in, in the course web pages. So I have a repository deployment, okay? I call it deployment, which basically has uh, a client and the server, okay? So nothing really special. Uh, what we developed uh, last week, only with the authentication, without the JVT, okay? Without the token, just because otherwise I need three servers instead of two, okay? I don't want to spend too much time in, you know, playing around with servers and so on. Um, so let's make it public so you'll see uh, I think there's a click of somewhere, settings. Uh, it's so big that sometimes I cannot find things. Uh, public. Uh, ah, upgrade to make this repository public. Uh, I cannot be made public after. Well, I recreate it <laughs> if it's needed. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. Um, I thought you could do that. Maybe you need an organization. Well, it doesn't matter. I, w I will find a way after the, the lecture. Okay? But in any case, that's uh, basically what we developed uh, here on uh, AW Week uh, Week 14. No, week, uh, uh, week 12. Sorry, 14 is next. Week 12. And that's the React QA login. Okay, that's uh, this example. Okay, so I just uh, made a repository just for this example. Okay, so git uh, pull. Let's just check everything is fine. Okay, um, I can go into client. Okay, there's no dist. You see, there's no dist. Okay, uh, npm. Uh, well, first of all, I need to install npm. Okay. I use CE because I'm sure what's installed here because I have the package log JSON. That's all. The, that's the same thing we will do at the exam. Hopefully, uh, we will have the exact your configuration that you tested. So now you have the node modules and you have Vite and so on. So we can npm run build. Okay. We leave it uh, working, okay? And then there's this dist folder. And in dist, uh, you'll find assets and so on, index, uh, assets, uh, this, these files, with the name which is a bit different from, you know, the, the slides because every time it changes. Uh, let me see if we can open the files. Uh, this, uh, so that's the index HTML. Open with the uh, Visual Studio Code is fine. Uh, yes, fine. Okay. Uh, so that's exactly the same file we saw on the slides, right? And then you have. Uh, the others, like uh, the JavaScript, uh, okay, that's the, the stuff. I mean, but we don't care. I mean, we trust the white, okay? I just uh, created uh, something that is actually our code, just uh, minified, okay? Good. And then, uh, for the server, actually the server doesn't need any modifications. I mean the server, well, of course we, I mean, would, if we would like to test this, uh, uh, this application, of course we need to do npm uh, CE or npm install and so on and uh, node mon index or node index and run the server, okay? 
but we don't want to do it locally here. We would like to do it uh, on a remote uh, platform, okay? Uh, so, what do we do? What do, we do? Uh, let me send it down. Okay. We identify a free survey, I identified it for you, I tried uh, to search a little bit. It's render.com, you create uh, an account which is free for basic services at least. I mean, it's free to, reco to register a new account, but it's free, I mean, using uh, si very simple services. And then make your projects uh, accessible to the service, okay? Typically, Almost all these services require that you provide the code in the form of a Git repository, okay? Either GitHub or GitLab or other Git, uh, you know, websites around. Uh, why? Because typically when you deploy something, you start from source code and they will do the deploy. So they will do the run of NPM run uh, build uh, and then we will, they will install the uh, node packages uh, and they will run the server, okay? Uh, and every time you would like to make a modification, if you don't have a place where to put the modification, it will be, let's say, a mess, okay? So it will be complicated to say, this is the new file, I just changed uh, this file and so on, okay? What do you do? You upload the file? No, you just create a new commit on the repository and often, Many of these sites automatically know and get notified of the fact that you have a new commit and you, they start a new deployment, okay, with a new version. So that's exactly what we are going to do with this repository, which unfortunately I cannot make public now, but we can see, you know, what we, we can do, what we need to do to make the deploy run. Uh, and then uh, I will make this uh, repository public, so you also have uh, the example, and you can try with your own, okay? So we only create one GitHub repository, which actually I already created, okay? I created it private, but you can also create it public, okay? It doesn't really matter. Of course, public means that anybody in, in, in the world can access uh, your repository if they know the address, okay? So it's good for, uh, for development for this course, but in actual deployment, you probably would like to keep the repository private because you, you have the secret sometimes inside and all these things, okay? And in general, it's not a really good practice to provide uh, the code about how your server works to, you know, all the world. Because if you have a vulnerability, of course, people can study your server code and see, well, we forgot to check this and try to exploit your, your server, okay? I'm not saying that those, uh, security through obscurity is uh, really the way to go, but at least uh, let's try not to s simplify things for the attackers, okay? So things should be secure, but I mean, in general, let's try not to simplify things, okay? Uh, so that's the architecture, and we need to create uh, two services okay, in this render.com, a static site that is for the React part, the NPM uh, run and build, and the web service that can run act an actual web server with APIs, okay? Let's choose a name. I choose this uh, values, uh, you know, just for fun and needs to, uh, it needs to be unique, okay? So try to be a bit creative. Okay, you cannot just say api.com because probably somebody has already taken api.com, the dot uh, whatever, okay, dot uh, will be on render.com, okay? And this, this will be part of uh, the actual um, URL that we you will use to access the application, okay? Of course, this is a free service, so it means that we have a lot of limitations. If you pay, you pr can probably register a domain, decide the, your name and whatever you want. Okay, but you know, in the free service, we stick with the simple things. So let's see live well, if I can do this, these things. So uh, render.com, okay, I already registered. Uh, so get started, uh, yes, no, uh, well, it doesn't matter. I, I, I I, don't, I wanted to log in. Uh, not a very nice 
to be used as small in a smaller screen okay so let's log in okay that's a sign in okay and I have a dashboard okay I already created two services because of course I tried to, to do something before coming to the lecture okay but let's create uh, the new ones okay so let's forget about this they are they are up and running you could test them okay I'll give, I will give you the URL in the end uh, so for the static site, uh, uh, let me see. Yeah, static site. Let's give a name. No, first we need to connect a repository. Okay, I will connect this uh, repository. Uh, I don't need to click. I need to click on connect. Okay. The, either it's public, you can put the URL HTTPS URL here, or it's yours and you click on connect I already connected my github account with them so they will not ask anything else but if it's not public they will tell uh, you know github do you allow to uh, render.com to access your repository you can choose the list or repository that you can uh, that you allow render.com access okay uh, and, and so on okay so this part is not shown here let's say for simplicity otherwise maybe something goes wrong and we don't have time to fix things so let's choose a, a, a name this is the static site so let's say uh, wa24 static okay uh, well actually i don't think the the uppercase matter Okay, main branch, you have all the configuration here. The, su the root directory is client. And in client, the build command is npm ce. Actually, yeah, it could be installed. I, I don't like it that much. npm run build. Actually, there are two commands. It says they have only one line. Okay, I, I just put both of them. Okay, I could put the end, but mm, let's forget about it. Publish directory, actually it's this, the one that we saw before. And then there are environment variables. Uh, uh, we will uh, fix them later. Okay, let's create a static site. Hopefully it will work. Okay, and then this will start a deployment. Okay, so it's pulling the stuff from GitHub checking out the uh, commit and so on installing the dependency it says that it's using node version 20 and so on but i mean we don't really have to care that much unless there's a problem of course it's a free version we cannot choose node version we cannot choose anything okay which uh, we can just choose the minimum to allow us to test the service in short okay and you will see that at a certain point it says it's ready Okay, and uh, uh, yeah, one important thing we need to notice is that's the URL, that's the place, I mean the URL where it can be accessed from the internet. I mean from the whole internet, from the Australia, they can access this URL now. Okay, so let's copy it to the clipboard. Okay, your site is live, so everything was fine and let's try to access it it will not work because uh, there are still things to fix but uh, i mean there's something that answers at least in the beginning the static stuff is is there okay let's have a look at the network always have a look at the network tab let's reload you see that it get uh, you know the index.html which is the first uh, file that then loads the JS, uh, CSS and stuff, okay? And then it goes uh, for to search, uh, you know, a wrong URL because you, we still need to fix it, okay? For the APIs. We still uh, need to have the API server, right? We didn't create it yet. So let's go back to the, to here. And let's create a web service this time. That's the API server, okay? Build from a Git repository, that's fine. I use my development repository. Let's give it a name. Okay, so we are here. 
let's give a name uh, we say to API okay that's our name it's also the name of the URL because in this very simple system that that uh, it works this way because it's free and so on okay run it uh, wherever you like I mean maybe in Europe it's easier <laughs> but I mean it doesn't really matter I mean the internet is a global network so you can run it wherever you like main branch this is default one uh, uh, root directory server okay because uh, that's the name I gave npm ce the basically installs installs all the packages okay it's like npm install and then to run node index js okay oops sorry and then of course free <laughs> Of course, I upgrade the pay, please, and to have something better and so on, so on. Okay, so let's create. Uh, no, let's uh, uh, before before creating. Okay. Uh, no, le let's create it, so in, uh, and then uh, I'll keep it in the background. Okay, so the same stuff will start, just with different commands. Okay, and that's a different uh, system because it creates a sort of virtual machine. It's not really a virtual machine, probably it's uh, like a Docker or some container, whatever. But uh, I mean, we don't really care. It's automatic. Okay. Uh, and what about uh, now the configuration? So now we have to fix course, right? Because uh, you know that in course we wrote localhost 5173 and the other side we asked for the APIs localhost 3001, okay? So either we go into the repository and we fix, uh, so it means we uh, change uh, the strings, we do a commit and so the redeploy starts. Or maybe you, we use uh, some better ideas, okay? Uh, the better idea is to use environment variables. When you run a program, the environment makes some values available through environment variables. This, is, uh, uh, this uh, applies to any computer system. Since the first that you used in you know, the first computer programming course, like when you program in C, you program in Python, you program in whatever, when you run something, there's an environment in which the program runs. And you can define environment variables that basically are a way to make some values available to your program without, need, without the need to um, pass it as a parameter on the command line or to put it into the code. Okay? And of course, each language has its own way to take this information. For instance, in JavaScript, with process.env, we will take this information from the environment. And this is very convenient to change the configuration without changing files. Like, uh, I have to change the name of the service. I just change uh, the environment variable, okay? And I need to prepare the code for this, which means that uh, I already did this, but in the client code, the URL is uh, this variable, okay? Vite API server rule, not that, uh, you know, for, to make the Vite build work, uh, you need to use a different uh, environment variable because this is a constant that will be put into a code and not, it's not to be run at runtime as all the others that we will see, okay? And in this uh, free system, the render.com, you, you have the possibility to specify um, environment variables, okay? So let's try to put these values now, since I already modified the code. I will show you the code in a minute. Um, but uh, you can do it usually only after that you started the, the service the first time, because then you know the URL that you need to use, okay? We need to put the URL for contacting the API server, and then the URL of the original application for the origin, and then the port, in which uh, it should list, in which uh, yeah, the server should listen. So let's uh, do it. So let's go to the client with the API URL. So let's copy this uh, URL, okay? 
Um, and uh, let's go to the dashboard and see this static settings. So we go back to the settings uh, and that's environment and uh, we will put this uh, byte API server URL slash API. Okay, that's the URL. Like we use the localhost 3001 slash API, that's the actual URL. Save it. Uh, network error when attempting to fetch the resource. Okay, well. It's a, actually a single page application, also React, uh, no, sorry, render.com. Okay, so probably failed to talk with the, its server. So, events, a deploy has started again. So, just click on deploy and you will see, you know, this uh, stuff again. And then we need to go, oh, the, what, is, what is it? Let's close this. We need to go to the server and decide the port on which the server should run and the origin, okay? The origin, it's easy. It's WA24 static. Let's copy, okay? And let's go to the dashboard and let's set it in API. Environment, so uh, origin, okay? Don't put the trailing slash, otherwise it will not match, okay? Uh, also add another variable, that's the port. Well, if you read the documentation uh, of render.com, it says uh, the service should run on port 10,000, and then it will be redirected internally, okay? That's a configuration option they, they chose, okay? So let's save this uh, configuration. Okay, so uh, events, yeah, it starts the deployment again, okay? And let's finish uh, the slides, so just a screenshot and so on. That's what's happening now. So basically we have a browser, we will talk uh, over HTTPS. You saw that it provides us a link with HTTPS. And that's the, then we talk with the onRender.com web server, because the URL is onRender.com, which is managed, of course, by these guys. And it will have our site, their site, uh, you know, many other sites. And with some configuration, it will automatically understand that request that arrives for a certain host will be redirected to our implementation so to our Node.js that is listening on port uh, 10,000, okay? Actually over HTTP, not over HTTPS, because we didn't configure Node to run over HTTPS, okay? So this uh, server will have the HTTPS certificate provided to our client, and this will decrypt the connection and so on, and will act as a so-called reverse proxy. So it means uh, it sees uh, the a HTTP request, it reads the HTTP request, and it forwards the HTTP request to the other server, so to our server, the Node.js one running on port 10,000, okay? And the same happens in the other way, okay? It's called the reverse proxy because uh, it's not a proxy that you use when you access something else and you, the, what you would like to access is behind the proxy, but it's be, uh, before the proxy, that's why it's reverse, okay? But it's just terminology. Uh, uh, I mean, this fact needs to be known because uh, it requires uh, one additional line of configuration in our server because Node doesn't work out of the box uh, behind the reverse proxies, okay? And we need to add this line, but I already did this, okay? And once we make everything work, we can also set the properties of the cookies, like the secure option. That means the cookie is only set over a secure connection, over HTTPS, okay? Um, let's check the code in the meanwhile. Uh, with the code? I mean, like in the server, index. You see that, uh, no. No, that's wrong. That's the AW Wix. 
the deployment. I would like to see the deployment one. I will make it public in some ways after the lecture. Server index. You see, that's what I wrote on the slides. Okay, origin and so on. And there is also the uh, proxy, okay? And in the client, I've done the same in APIs. .js, you see? Fight API server URL. This, these are all the modification I've done with respect to what I published uh, during the lectures, okay? Let's see if things work, hopefully. Uh, Okay, let's check if everything was fine. So, here it seems so. I understand we still have the memory store. I didn't want to, you know, do too many modifications. And in any case, since it's a free service, even if we write things to the disk, it will be deleted in a few minutes. Okay, so, I mean, there's not really no point in changing this for the moment. So, uh, this is one of the services. Let's have a look at the other one. Yeah, deployed. Uh, you can check if everything was fine by clicking here. And let's have a look uh, at the, let's say, uh, console. Okay, so let's try to access it. Copied. Actually, actually, it should be the same, right? Same link. Okay, so we are online. Okay, and this is not localhost. You see, w four twenty four static dot on render dot com. You can access it now from your web, from your PCs if you like. Just don't overload the website. <laughs> okay, it's a free service, so I'm not sure how many connection it takes. Okay, so it asked you no know, for the. Uh, WA24 API on render.com, so to the other web server, okay? With the course, and the course works. You see that uh, we have the correct header. We can also send the credential and stuff. Indeed, we can also log in, right? Okay. And you see we sent, uh, I think, the username and the password, yes? Uh, and we got the cookie in the response header. Response header, you see the cookie, and you see the HTTP only secure option in the end. HTTP only a secure option set. Okay? So, how can we test if the secure option works? Well, actually, let's play a little bit. Okay? Outside the website. We cannot, uh, uh, I mean, we need to stay in the browser. Uh, if we go out, of course, we can do whatever we want. Uh, API.render.com. This will not work. Uh, no. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we need to specify HTTP. Is that the correct? Ah, onRender.com. Okay, there's nothing at the slash, right? You remember that we had API questions, for instance. That's that's the JSON answer. Okay, but observe this: we logged in on the other application. So let's try to resend this uh, request. You see the get? The get will include the cookie, right? No, it will not. Why? Because you still need to do one thing, okay? Modern browsers takes a lot of precautions, okay? To avoid these attacks, especially cross-site attacks, okay? So let's disable this uh, tracking protection I mean, the cookie is, is being sent. It just, you know, it doesn't want to show us the cookie, okay? So let's just disable these options, okay? 
So you'll see this icon, which is also on the slides. Uh, yeah, this icon, okay? And so in this way, let's try to reload this, uh, this API. Hopefully you will see the cookie, not yet. Probably you need to authenticate again, yes. Okay, let's reload it. We will see the cookie now, okay? That has been sent uh, actually on a secure connection because it was HTTPS, right? Let's just do the last uh, test. Let's remove HTTPS and let's put HTTP. Okay, let's see what happens. I press enter. Well, all render.com is configured not to serve anything on HTTP and it will redirect over HTTPS. But let's see the request. Okay, in the first request, you see there's no cookie because the browser knows it's an HTTPS only cookie, only for secure connections. Okay? And it will send it only in the second request, which is over HTTPS. Okay? So, let's say we protected the cookie from being sniffed, intercepted in some places in the network. Okay, and the browser did it for us because we did this operation by mistake. Of course, here we did it on purpose. You could uh, do this operation by mistake while programming in your application. But you don't risk leaking the cookie in case you have a problem in your application if you set uh, this flag. But to set this flag, you need to have HTTPS enabled and all this stuff. And so you basically you can do it only in a, in a real scenario, not over localhost. Okay, it becomes very difficult to do it on localhost. Okay, so, I mean, there's nothing else we need to do. I mean, it's, yeah, oh, you played a little bit, right? <laughs> okay. You see, it's a, web, it's a shared application. A web application is a shared application between many users, okay? And maybe you also logged in as Enrico, okay, because I, I, I mean, in an actual application, everybody has uh, its own uh, uh, um, user ID and password who doesn't share with the others, right? But there can be things like this, right? That they, they, they are accessible to any user. Upvote, upvote. We left them accessible to any user without login and so on, okay? So, I mean, you can edit, you can do whatever you like, okay? What's the, draw, uh, what's the problem of this uh, um, system? Well, we actually are on the free tire, so it means that you will not use it for like 10, 15 minutes. They shut down the server because they need to save money, I mean. And then you access the server, they will redeploy them, it, uh, sorry and uh, it will take a few, a few seconds, like uh, 30 seconds, something like this. But they will restart from what is saved in the GitHub, including the database. So this modification will not be saved. Of course, you can make everything permanent and so on. I mean, if you pay, you can do whatever you want, okay? But I mean, just for testing, I think it's enough to demonstrate what we can do, okay? So, this is just last, okay, note, notes. In the free web server, files are often deleted. Means that if, they are not, if you're not using it, they will delete it, including the SQLite 3. So why it works? Because every time you make a new access and they don't have the deployment running, they make a new deployment, but they start from the original version of the files, okay? And also be careful because browsers are extremely careful when sharing information on domains, especially certain domains, like onRender.com is in a sort of, I don't want to say blacklist, but I mean, it's in a list, well, because uh, in a list that says, uh, well, on this domain, everybody can register a subdomain. So be, be very, very, very careful in sharing things with these domains, okay? 
if you buy your own uh, um, domain and so on, you don't have these problems, okay? But of course, again, we need to pay money and, and just, you know, to, 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 to show something, I think that's enough, okay? And also, if you have your own domain, you need your own certificate and all this stuff. It's true, there are places where you can get a certificate for free and so on, but I mean, these are all system things uh, and we are not uh, really interested in addressing them here, okay? So, that's more or less all for the deployment. Just try at home uh, with your account, deploy your application and play with that, okay? Um, let's, uh, yeah, everything is working. Let's have a look at the last uh, topic for today, which is actually um, the exam. Right, so very important. That's this page, exam rules. Okay, I hope you already read all the exam rules. They are there since the beginning of the course. If we will make a, a modification, I will tell you on the telegram or you know during the lecture. This this is just one of the modifications that I've I've done. I mean, I put this in bold, okay? So remember, I mean, work on your own, okay? I have a new software, by the way, for this year, for, I mean, not, not just for you, but I mean, I just discovered it recently because colleagues uh, pointed me to that software, you know, to run some similarity checks. Just, uh, you know, um, I mean, just uh, d don't, uh, don't panic, let's say, in the sense that if you develop things on your own and you don't share code with your colleagues and so on, for the final exam, I mean, uh, I mean, you shouldn't have any problem. And in any case, if the, if the software tells me, well, these are two or three things which are very similar, before saying anything, of course, I'll go and manually inspect the code, okay? It, it's not just a match, uh, an automatic match, I mean, uh, or a very simple method. It's a bit intelligent in a certain sense. You cannot just rename a variable and it doesn't match, okay? But, I mean, in general, I mean, there are so many ways in which you can implement things that basically, when we had the match with this software, actually things were almost identical, okay? And indeed, they, they were actually copied. I mean, the people admitted that uh, they took it, <laughs> okay? So, nothing to be worried about excessively, okay? You work on your own, you develop your solution, you submit your solution, that's fine, okay? And in case uh, yeah, you will always have the chance to review the code with me and with the other people that in case they are involved, okay? Um, so the discussion, I, I think we, I mean, there's n nothing, uh, that need to be said about this. Uh, it's better that uh, we discuss uh, maybe about the, um, you know, these uh, instructions. Uh, in each exam, there will be the text, so the specification, what you need to develop, uh, create a shop, uh, electronic shop, uh, web application, and stuff like that. Okay, and so on with this and that, etc. And then will be a common part, which is the part I reported here, which I adapted a little bit to the case of this course for this year. Okay. Uh, so, uh, of course, you need to develop a single page application, must be implemented in React with Node plus Express, a database SQLite. Okay. I know many other things could be done, but we need to be fast uh, uh, and, you know, to, to do the oral exam as fast as possible. It will take uh, probably minimum 20 minutes for each student, okay? Hopefully, I will be with my colleague Antonio at the exam, so we can, you know, parallelize things a little bit. But, of course, if there are like 100 students for an exam, I mean, we cannot do all of them uh, in one day. Okay, it will take probably three days, four days. You will have the chance to book uh, a slot, okay? In the, uh, I will publish a sort of calendar um, a few days before the deadline, 
okay? Just, uh, just to allow you to choose a suitable uh, day and time, which is compatible with your other exams, okay? Um, I mean, things in the past really worked uh, quite well, so I mean, I'm still keeping this approach. Um, and then in, uh, in this lot, you will uh, have to come, okay, and discuss the project with me or my colleague. And means that uh, I will have the project on the computer, on my computer, actually on the server, not on the computer because it's easier on the server. It takes uh, a lot of space because you know there are 100 installation of nodes. It means a gigabyte of stuff uh, on of uh, npm packages. I mean, and uh, I will test with you the application a little bit, uh, log in, log out, uh, and the functions uh, and so on. And, uh, and then we will discuss uh, things uh, arise during the test. And uh, uh, first of all, I will read the readme file. We will have a look at the readme file uh, in a minute. And then uh, we will have a look at the code, okay? And then you'll get a vote, a mark, okay? That's all. Um, and uh, to be efficient, we need that everybody use uh, this approach, the approach that we, we have seen in the course, okay? Uh, React, uh, Node, Express, SQLite. Course, so somebody of you has asked me, can I use a reverse proxy? I'm sorry, not, okay? I, I already told him uh, it's, you know, in the cybersecurity course, it's probably also nice to know something about course, so, um, use the course. You don't need to do the deployment. The deployment was just an example, okay? Just for you to play a little bit with what we learned on the in the course, okay? Um, the evaluation of the project will be carried out by navigating the application. We will not reload the application, but of course, if something doesn't work and we are forced to do that, of course, we will have to do that, okay? But if everything works, we don't expect that we need to reload the application. So we start from slash and we will use the application, okay? So you don't have to handle URLs which are different from slash. Uh, there should be a readme file. These are the commands that we will use to run uh, the, um, the, the server and the clients. The usual command, the one that we already, <laughs> that we put into the, the website as well. Must be submitted on GitHub using the GitHub Classroom platform. There are instructions how to do this. And there's also uh, a lab. Actually, the last lab, there's a, a, a fake assignment. I mean, there's no text, there's just a link to, you know, to test the submission. And you can submit whatever you want, just to have the opportunity to test the system, okay? With, with the something with, we don't care about, okay? <laughs> You'll store it on, on, on GitHub and we don't care. Um, okay, uh, maybe I can share it for, for tomorrow as well, but we'll, I, I'll think about this. Um, the project must not include the node modus directory. I recommend you not to include it. There are the git ignore files that prevents you from commit them, so uh, you really need to do it on purpose, but please don't do it, <laughs> okay? Uh, you need to include the package log JSON. This is the cybersecurity course. We discussed a lot about, you know, hashes of packages and so on. So it's true that we could make things work without the package log, but submit a package log as well, okay? Just a text file, an additional text file which is generated automatically, so it doesn't cost you any additional effort. You can use any library you like, hopefully well-known libraries. Okay, if you use something which is a bit strange, have a look at what it's doing at least, okay? But I mean major libraries, uh, React, Bootstrap, uh, DJS, um, validation libraries, stuff like that is, of course, uh, perfectly fine. You need to implement the authentication using passport and sessions, okay? You cannot use the token as the authentication mechanism. But it's just to, follow the same pattern as we did during the lectures. Nothing different, okay? It's possible to establish a session with a token, but we, we, we didn't see that, and we will not ask. Uh, indeed, we will ask not to do that, okay? 
uh, user registration is usually not requested, so you can just put the users into the database, but this depends on the text. I mean, typically we don't require it because it's very mechanical. You need to copy and paste. I mean, all the code will be the same, and there's no point in you know making you work uh, much more than what what is needed for the exam. Okay. Uh, if there's a second server, you need to use a JVT token. Okay, fine. The database, uh, you are free to use the database in the schema that you like. There will be some requirements, like some preloaded information just to speed up the test. Okay? Uh, but this depends uh, on the exam. The readme, uh, we will have a look at the format for the readme file. And there will be an example, a sample readme file on the last lecture so on Thursday 13th, I think, uh, where I provide the full solution of an exam that has been done by a colleague of you uh, a couple of years ago with a full readme, which I also adapted for the case of this year because we have a second server and so on, okay? So I tried to fix it a little bit in the form that is uh, the best uh, suitable one for our case, okay? We, you will need to include a screenshot uh, uh, as well, but I mean, this is simple. Uh, I mean, uh, just to make sure that uh, in case something don't work, we have a place to look at uh, uh, what should come out from your application, okay? That, that was much, use, much more useful uh, uh, a few years ago when uh, actually we were doing a pre-test ourselves, but nowadays we are testing it with you, so I mean, this is a bit less useful, but in case something don't work, we'll have a look at the screenshot to have a, at least an idea what should appear, okay? Maybe it's an empty page in the beginning, it's right, okay, but, you know. Uh, submission procedure, now we will go to the detailed instruction. You need to register for the exam, okay? You need to click and, uh, you know, I would like to uh, register for the exam on the, what's uh, the, uh, July the 1st or July the 15th or September, I don't know if there are already some dates and so on, okay? This click has to be done on the Didattica Polito web portal, okay? The usual stuff that you do for all exams, nothing really special. Just don't forget to do that because we have a script to download all the projects and so on, and if you are in the list of, uh, of the students that we would like to uh, give the exam, uh, you will be taken down from GitHub and so on and downloaded, etc. Uh, unless it becomes very difficult for us to manage all these things, okay? Especially if you are a lot of uh, students giving exam at this uh, uh, in one occasion, okay? One single occasion. You need to put uh, your exam uh, on GitHub in a specific repository that will be created using the specific link for the exam that every time I will provide. So, for the next lab, I will provide a link, which is just a, a, a fake assignment, so no text. You can try how the system works. And then, for the first exam, when we publish the text, we will also publish this link. There will be a second text for the second exam, there will be a second link, and so on. Make sure you use the correct one, okay? Uh, you need to tag the, uh, the commit you would like to be evaluated with the word final, okay? All lowercase, no quotes, and so on. Just to distinguish people that simply try to upload something from people which actually would like to come to at the exam, okay? Because anybody can click and, you know, create the repository and leave it empty or put some files. But actually, we would like to know who would like to come to the exam and who not, okay? And uh, this is really important for us. It's, I know that it could be it's enrolled or not, but let's say it's the end, okay? Be enrolled and put the final tag because some people forget to, uh, you know, uh, uh, disenroll or uh, delete the enrollment in the exam, okay? At a certain point, you cannot uh, do it anymore, I think, if you're very close to the exam, I believe. Uh, and so, I mean, this, this is not really uh, um, um, reliable information for us, 
okay? And this is very important because it gives us an idea on how to plan for the exam. If you're enrolling 100 people, it's one thing. If you are just 10, it's another thing, okay? 10 people, you can, you know, work and do the exam in half, half a day. The, uh, 100 people means we need to book rooms for three days, four days, okay? And it's very different, different from us, for us, okay? Uh, yeah, just test uh, your submission. These are the, the commands that we will use to test, I mean, to download and test your submission. Nothing really special. We clone the repository on the server. Uh, we create, uh, well, a new, a new branch, but just for our convenience. But, I mean, we just take uh, what you tag as final, and we enter the directories, we do install, and we run. Okay? And that's all. And that's the same script we will use at the exam to run the stuff, okay? Again, to save time. Uh, note, we will test it under Linux. I know it's, you know, most of you, almost all of you don't use Linux. <laughs> Give it a run on Linux, okay? Why? Because that's case sensitive for the file names, okay? And you can do it in many ways, like in a virtual machine, you can, uh, uh, you can run it even in, on this, uh, you know, system that we saw for deployment. I mean, just if, if it compiles, uh, if everything is installed and run, it works, okay? Just keep it secret, okay? Because it's uh, for, just for you, okay? And then you can delete the services as well, if you tried in this, way, in this system. Um, let me see the rest. Classroom instruction, I mean, this is uh, very verbose, but uh, they are step by step, but they will be very simple, okay? I'll give you a link, you click, you, you have a GitHub account, that's a prerequisite, okay? So first thing, you need to have a GitHub account, any account, we don't care. You can create one just for the exam, you can create, uh, you can use the one that you normally use, you can create one if you don't have, I mean, we don't really care. Any name you like. You just need to authorize Classroom, you know, to access the GitHub account and so on, and choose your name. If there's no name that corresponds to you, write me an email or write me a Telegram, whatever, okay? And I'll try to see if there's something wrong, uh, why you are not in the list, or maybe you have a different value name or whatever. I will try to, to, to fix it. Please, don't skip this step. If you skip this step, the, the, I mean, nothing will be associated with you, okay? There's a button, skip this step, but you shouldn't use it, okay? It's just for anonymous submission, but I don't think you're interested in. And then accept the assignment, you click it, and the repository will be created for you with the skeleton project, okay? And the skeleton project, will already contain the readme file, uh, at least the sections, and you develop there as you like. You can use GitHub to you know, push commits, do a lot of commits and whatever, branches, whatever you like. Or you can just use it at the end. You develop your stuff, you copy it in the repository, you create a commit, a push, tag, push, that's all, okay? We don't care, we don't care about the history. You can use it uh, as you like, okay? Uh, yeah, just be careful about the tag. Verify that the tag is, is pushed to GitHub because sometimes the tag is just local. If you don't push it, it's local, okay? And we will not see it. But if you go to the web interface, you will see the tag here, it's fine. Okay, uh, let me see most frequent errors and so on, but then GitHub. We still have uh, a few minutes. I will not go through the whole document there because uh, uh, it's a long document, but uh, exam, yeah. That's the exam template that will be cloned for you. Actually, it's empty, okay? The client, well, actually, yeah, I already run Vite create, okay? But it's basically empty, that's a demo client uh, that you get with Byte, you, you're free to modify whatever you like. 
Uh, no, absurd. What's the? And then there's uh, the server, which is basically empty. Okay. Actually, there are two servers because we expect one works uh, with the JVT and so on. And there's the readme, which is actually empty as well. Okay. You put uh, your first name, last name, routes, API server API. Uh, sorry, routes of the API server, routes for the API server too. The name of the database tables and columns, uh, main React components, a screenshot, the credentials, and that's all. Okay? You will have a, a, a complete uh, README from which you can start as the example that I will show you in the, in the last lecture. Okay? The very last uh, lecture of the course. So, last uh, element I would like to discuss with you it's this document, which actually I maintained over uh, the last two, three years. Hopefully, it will be useful for you. If you have any doubt, just feel free to ask. Uh, well, for the exam, of course, we will not be able to ask questions like, I should, should implement uh, this option in this way or the other way. Okay, this kind of question, can, I mean, you can ask, but we will not answer. Okay, because of course it's your decision, it depends on how you would like to implement uh, the solution of the exam. Okay, but uh, I mean, the, uh, one of the requirements seems to be in conflict with some of the recommendations and so on. And so, except if we can, we will try to help you. Okay, if you ask questions about uh, things that might not be clear, that means uh, both on the text and uh, on the recommendation that we give, okay? You will have the opportunity to ask questions on the text. We will usually publish the text as a Google Doc where anybody can comment, okay? We will give you a few days to comment things, so ask questions in short, and then we will try to make a summary of all your comments and adjust the text so that it's clearer, okay? So maybe we write the text with some specifications that are not clear enough. We will make some small modification to the text to make them clearer, okay? We will mark those modifications in some color, like red and so on. And then we will close the comments and other questions we will, can be asked on Telegram, for instance, okay? Hopefully not the same ones. <laughs> I mean, you already have an answer, hopefully. And uh, there are a lot of uh, recommendations. I invite you to read at least uh, the first part, which is the most important. But before you read uh, all these advices, note that the project, you can always submit a project, okay? If you don't submit a project, the, the, the exam is failed, of course. I mean, actually, not even failed. I mean, I think we, we mark you as absent. Okay, not really fate, okay? But I mean, in any condition you can submit a project, maybe something was not implemented and so on. I mean, it's like any exam. You are not well prepared, you try to uh, go to the exam, uh, it's your choice, right? There are uh, errors or mistakes which are much bigger and there are mistakes which are smaller, okay? So some of this is just advice. But some of this is really big mistake, like the first two, okay? It's unacceptable that the application does not work when two separate users operate at the same time. We will not, typically not test it if it's not uh, necessary for the testing, uh, you know, according to the specifications. But for sure, we will have a look at the code and if we spot something like this, you probably come back <laughs> in another exam session, I mean. Because, you know, like, uh, 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 you know, this is uh, an example of two things uh, which I've spotted uh, in past exams, okay? You cannot, you cannot really use a, a generic global variable in a server where you store information coming from the client. That's something that leads to exam failure for sure, okay? But we never did it. I mean, it's something that you need to invent, okay? What we did in the course is just best practices, 
Okay, so if you stick to what we have seen in the course, you should have no problem. But since, you know, people try to invent anything <laughs> when you submit the exam, I try to, to give some advice on what not to do, okay? As well, it's in a, unacceptable to make assumptions about the value that are stored in, in the database. I mean, if I have four users, one, one, two, three, four, in the client part, and, and there are IDs like one, two, three, four for the users. In the client part, I, I, I must not see things like, uh, well, if user less than four, less than five, okay? I mean, this assumes uh, which, which IDs are in the, in the client. What, what are you going to do if, you, if the, there's a different ID for the user? The application doesn't work anymore. I mean, this, this is really unacceptable. We never did it, these things, okay? But since, you know, fantasy is really big when, 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 you, when students submit things for exam, you know. I, I've seen once, uh, uh, I mean, luckily just once or twice, okay, over like uh, 500 students. Okay, so it's not really very common, but it's really, really wrong, okay? Uh, and uh, a lot of other advice like, uh, you know, uh, create IDs on the server side with the database. Um, use the correct method when writing and calling the HTTP APIs. We will check a lot this. I mean, if you, once you use the, a post, a get instead of a post, of course you lose marks, okay? Uh, probably if, if it's just done once, by chance, by, uh, by mistake, you probably still pass the exam, okay? But if you have all gets, okay, even when you need post, put, and so on, that's something that is not acceptable. Always check on the server side the roles, permission, who, of those who read, write information. This is really, really important and one of the most common mistakes. One of one of your colleagues asked me during the break why I should check if the user is, if the user is logged in and so on. There's no button in the client. If you say something like this at the exam, it means you didn't understand anything about authentication. This is a cybersecurity course of study. I mean, the point is that anybody can send requests to our application. Now it's even live. We deployed it, right? From Australia, they can, send any request without passing through our browser, okay? So, our browser is fine for the user that is using the application, but the attacker will not use the browser. So any validation, check, and so on, must be done on the server side if it concerns uh, server APIs, okay? We will strictly check this, especially this year, because that's a cybersecurity course of study. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's conceptually wrong to say, I checked it in the client, okay? You checked it in the client for user's convenience, but not for security, okay? Avoid, uh, you know, doing things like, uh, write complex regular expression, stuff like that, you need to check an email, search for a library, use the HTML5 uh, type uh, email and so on. I mean, don't lose your time on these things, okay? You already have a, a lot of other things to do. And also you, you, you risk, uh, you know, uh, implementing things wrong. Uh, well, uh, do things in a reasonable manner in short. Okay, don't do assumptions where it's not uh, the case. I mean, I've seen a lot of applications where you couldn't type a space. Where do you live? Uh, for some reason, they're just, uh, you know, alf uh, uh, alphanumeric characters, no, alf alphabetic characters. I mean, if I live in, in a place that has a space or an accent, or oh, it cannot be short than six, six characters. I mean, I live in Rome. How, how can I type it? I mean, don't do this kind of assumption. They are not required, for sure, in the specification. Just ideas of somebody that, uh, you know, I don't know what, what, what they thought, okay? 
I mean, of course, it's not like uh, I use the global variable on the server. So, I mean, you're not going to fail this exam for this. Uh, you'll lose uh, some marks, okay? Hopefully less than before. Uh, don't use too many user factor. I mean, that depends, okay? Don't use, use less user facts, okay? But because it, the code gets more complicated, especially for you, okay? Because then you need to make it work. And uh, it's a complex state machine in which probably you didn't handle all the states. So there are a few clear. Uh, we will probably have a look at all user facts in your code at the exam as well, because they are the more interesting part as the APIs. Uh, yeah, and the rest is more or less what we say that during the course, okay? Uh, we will try to design APIs in the next lecture when we try to address uh, the, uh, uh, an actual test that we gave a couple of years ago. User interface issue, do something reasonable in short, okay? Um, yeah, that's one of the things I would like to mention. If you need to enter a telephone number that can, cannot be a numeric field. I don't want to click on the plus to enter a numeric, a numeric value like a telephone number. Okay, it doesn't make sense. Okay, but I mean, these are really basic mistakes. So, so the, the, the uh, yeah, oh, don't, uh, don't use window dot something. You are in React, that's forbidden, okay? Why? Because actually, the DOM is managed by React. You don't want to touch uh, DOM outside React, apart from the fact that it appears differently and so on. Okay? Uh, more pages, yes. Yeah, do something reasonable. Give it to your friend, maybe not your colleague that is giving the same exam, but you know, some friends. Use this application. Let's, let's have a look at what they are doing. They are exactly as us. We don't know your application. We'll try to navigate. We look for a login button. We look for a list or whatever, okay? Depending on the text. Do something reasonable. That's a summary, okay? Use the good practice that we saw on the in the lectures. And, you know, follow the instruction for submission very carefully. And, yeah, and the readme. Do a, reas a reasonable readme. We'll start from the readme at the exam, okay? But you have a good example. And I already showed you an empty one. I will provide you with a, a, a one which has, which has written very well uh, as an example, okay? That's all. In case you have, yeah, that's a question. Is it possible for each session to have like the one the Yeah, actually, that's a question that uh, we got uh, in other years as well. No, actually, we will not provide solutions for, for the sessions. Also, because this is not fair for the ones who give the, the first exam, right? I mean, we will provide a solution for the example that uh, I will show uh, on the last uh, week, uh, the last lecture, okay? That's uh, actually a, 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 an exam that we gave uh, a couple of years ago, okay? Mm, no, I don't think so. I can discuss by, with my colleague, but uh, I mean, we already discussed these kind of things. Um, I mean, I'm not in favor of that, okay? We, I mean, actually, I mean, not really the best solution. I will provide you a, a, a good solution, a really good solution. Maybe I'm, I'm still wondering, maybe it's even too good. No, I mean, because it's not so easy to understand it in certain places, okay? But you will have a, a model, okay? That's a maximum, okay? And, and the rest, let's say, it's the example that uh, I provided during the lectures, okay? So you can start from that. It's already there, okay? Authentication plus JVT. No other question? In any case, I'm in the lab tomorrow morning for half an hour, uh, one hour and a half. I will be in the lab uh, the week after, what, three hours, and then there will be the last lecture. That, that's the question. How to use what? Yeah, 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 we can try, we can try. Yeah, yeah, thank you, yes.
I will provide a link for the lab. You can experiment in the lab. But I'll show you in the in the last in the last lecture. Okay. Okay. No more questions. Thank you. We'll meet uh, tomorrow in the lab.